Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar by Manipal Global Next. The webinar will start in a minute as we wait for more participants to join in. So please uh, have patience and please wait. Okay, a very warm welcome and good evening to everyone joining in today for the live webinar conducted by Manipar Global Next on the top reasons to study an online MBA in healthcare management. My name is Preeti and I work as a program manager at Manipar Global Next Education Services, Bangalore. Okay, so meanwhile, we hope that all of us are keeping safe and in good health. We have all joined from home, so we request you to kindly bear with us in case of any minor interruptions. And for any questions that you have, may please type it out in the question panel in the widget. We will be answering them towards the end of the session. To our participants who are all working professionals, we applaud you for taking the first step towards upskilling and professional development. So we have uh, today with us esteemed speaker joining us all the way from Malaysia, Dr. Chinmay Sahu, Vice Chancellor of Manipal GNU, Global Next University, and Dr. Saumendra Sahu, who is the Director, Center for Trans Transformative Learning, Head Department at Manipal uh, University College, Malaysia. So moving on, let me take you over uh, the agenda for today's webinar. So I uh, so Manipal Global Presence, Manipal Global Next University, comp uh, Genesis, Competitive Advantages, Pedagogy, MBA Program Highlights and Benefits, Delivery Methodology, Six Reasons to Study an Online MBA in HCM at Manipal Global Next University, and end will be the QA. So now uh, I request Dr. Chinmay to say to introduce himself and take over the session. Okay, thank you, Preeti, and a warm welcome to everyone. Great to see you all here on a Sunday uh, evening. And uh, of course, uh, next few minutes will just take you through um, uh, the the major highlights of uh, today's uh, uh, today's webinar. And I'm sure by the end of it, you would uh, have a great insight into uh, reasons to pursue lifelong learning, All right? Um, so I'm I'm Chinmoy Sahu, and I'm the Vice Chancellor of Global Next University, as Preeti introduced me into. Uh, of course, I've been with this institution for about uh, 15 um, long years, um, right from its Singapore days. Uh, we shifted uh, to Malaysia somewhere in 2012, but overall, uh, it has been a. Uh, we are we are basically celebrating 20 years of um, uh, our establishment and 20 years of, more importantly, 20 years of uh, uh, you know uh, allowing learners the great opportunity of learning while working. So we have been delivering online 
uh, programs for 20 years now, much before um, uh, this COVID pandemic happened and a lot of uh, other institutions have uh, shifted to online learning mode uh, just now, but uh, we have been here for about the last two decades. Uh, of course, my area is uh, finance. So I uh, most of my research and published work has been in that area. Uh, but I, of course, uh, love, uh, you know, the idea of uh, technology intervened learning that is uh, that that has the potential to disrupt the world of learning so today i'm going to talk about uh, my passion and what manipal global next is all about and how you can benefit from our rich heritage so before uh, proceeding into our program and uh, uh, related information I just wanted to give you a uh, broad overview about the Manipal group as a whole. Of course, I'm sure all of you are aware by now, uh, since you have gone through the webinar, um, you know, collaterals and uh, informations. So, uh, of course, all of you know Manipal very well, but not many of you may be aware that, in fact, Manipal has a number of international campuses. So what you see on the screen is, of course, our uh, Manipal University campus in Manipal. Uh, these are India uh, campuses, of course. Then we have Sikkim Manipal University in Sikkim, Manipal University Jaipur. And rest of the universities that you see here are all international university campuses. So my colleague, uh, Dr. Saumendra, who will be speaking later, um, is from Manipal University College, Malaysia. So, um, in fact, Malaysia has three Manipal campuses. One is uh, this um, uh, MUCM, which is Manipal University College, and uh, which is in Malacca, is southern part, uh, southernmost part of uh, Malaysia. Then we have two more campuses. Uh, one is uh, Manipal International University, Malaysia, which is in Nilai, about 35 kilometers from uh, the center of Keo, and about 15 kilometers from uh, the international airport. And we, uh, as Manipal Global Next University, also share the same campus. So uh, Manipal Global Next University is also in Malaysia. And then we have the American in University of Antigua, uh, in Antigua, of course, many of you who are uh, who follow cricket would easily recall the name of Antigua, which has produced some great cricketers. Uh, then Manipal College of Medical Sciences in Man Nepal, and of course Manipal University Dubai campus, right? So today we are going to talk more about um, Manipal Global Next University Malaysia. So I will just take you through a quick um, overview about the university, what we do, and how you can benefit from it. So as I said, uh, we, are, uh, we have completed 20 years of uh, presence in online education, and um, we were established in 2001 in Singapore, then known as U21 Global, which stood for Universitas 21 Global, meaning the university of the 21st century. So, of course, this was formed by some of the most reputed universities across the world, some of these names you see here. So, all these universities pool their resources, and that's how U21 Global started in Singapore. And since then, you can see the statistics are all very um, exciting. Of course, we are part of 68 years of, uh, you know, Manipal legacy, uh, which started with the medical establishment in India. And um, for us, we have we are into our 21st year. And uh, as Manipal Global Next University, and in these 21 odd years, uh, we have basically uh, allowed about 21,000 plus learners to upskill themselves 
to uh, to um, and and to become better better managers and accelerate their professional careers. And over the years, of course, uh, we have worked very closely with the industry, with about 100 plus, uh, you know, partnerships with different nom uh, corporates who even nominate their students to our programs, including the MBA program. So all in all, uh, something that started as a humble beginning in 2001 has actually matured into some exciting um, statistics that you, have see, you can see here. And talking about our accreditation, of course, um, we are uh, all our programs are accredited by MQA, which is the Malaysian Qualifications Agency. This is the nodal agency in Malaysia. Any award program or a higher education program that has to be offered by any university needs to be accredited by the uh, MQA. So this is our accreditation body. Apart from that, we are also members of um, different association, very reputed uh, association like the Association of Commonwealth Universities, then Association, uh, the Asian Association of Open Universities, International Council for Open and Distance Education, EFMD, which stands for European Foundation for Management Development, then uh, Malaysian Higher Education Institution Quality Assurance Network, and AACSP, many of you would know, um, this is a very reputed uh, body in um, United States. Apart from that, uh, our qualifications are actually well uh, recognized by credentialing services like WES. There are many others apart from WES also like IQAS. And many of our students have benefited from this. Many have migrated to uh, even countries like Canada, um, where our qualification has been considered equivalent to the local Canadian uh, qualification of similar level. Uh, and talking about uh, establishment, talking about accreditations, faculty is again a very important part of any um, uh, institution of higher education. And uh, thanks to our model of um, online delivery, our professors are actually across the world. Just like our students are across the world, our professors are also across the world. All are PhD qualified. PhD is a minimum requirement, but apart from that, the number of years of uh, you know, uh, experience is also required to be on the uh, faculty uh, list, right? So today uh, we have 75 plus PhD qualified faculty coming from 17 plus nationalities, and some of the professors who are regularly, uh, you know, uh, uh, involved in our classes, uh, you can see their profiles here. So we have Jason, he's an Australian. Uh, Mark is from US. Uh, Habib Ola is from Singapore. Uh, uh, Dr. Mamta, Dr. Evelyn is from Alaska, US. Karen, she is from Europe, uh, Austria, actually. Uh, so a wide diversity in our faculty body, uh, which actually helps uh, improve the uh, whole experience of learning. To add to that, uh, we, as I said, our students, faculty are across the world. The library cannot just remain in Malaysia. So our library also is completely um, remote. It, uh, you can access all these wonderful titles that you see here, right from Harvard Business Review to the Wall Street Journal to Financial Times and so on and so forth, plus a number of books. All of these are uh, available um, on the browser. Okay. And with a single sign-on, our students don't need to sign on to a separate uh, library page. So it's all single sign-on for an amazing experience. Okay, uh, now this is what uh, uh, I just wanted to uh, talk about uh, uh, for maybe a couple of minutes. To tell you how the face of learning is changing over the years, and especially in the recent uh, years. So, First of all, and all these pillars we have embraced with all our heart. So whatever you see on the screen, actually what we have implemented. These are not ideas. These are actually 
well executed implemented ways of life for manipal global next university so first is like you have on demand entertainment on demand uh, you know these days um, on demand food whatever it's it's uh, it's the age of on demand you want to learn it is also available on demand you don't have to wait for a certain time to start your class for for your professor to come online and all that no it's on demand so uh, that's why our course content all these resources are available on the web 24 by 7 and uh, of course uh, so so basically you can learn when and where you want so basically you choose the time and place of learning rather than uh, you having to go somewhere to attend classes or wait for a certain time to start your classes right? so on demand learning is something which we have uh, we have adopted and all our students get access to the learning material and the learning portal 24 bar 7 including the e library as i said right and uh, secondly uh, we have actually implemented flexible learning to the core and when i say that it means uh, we do not have a fixed semester pattern we are not telling you that okay you do module one two and semester one module two three uh, three four and semester two and so on and so forth no it's completely modular you choose the modules from the list of uh, modules being offered in that particular semester you select it and uh, you also have the flexibility of selecting one two three four it uh, the choice is yours right so uh, uh, that's how learning has to be especially um, we we have had great success 99 percent of our students are all working adults and when i say working they're actually in very good middle and senior um, management uh, you know uh, levels therefore for them flexibility matters therefore the completion rate is more than 95 percent uh, across all programs so that speaks volumes about how uh, learners enjoy the flexibility that we provide and uh, thirdly application-based learning we basically never believed in memory oriented learning it has to be whatever you learn has to be application based therefore all our assessment are application based work integrated projects open book open web exams okay so that's how you learn how to apply what you have learned okay and uh, finally social learning 30 percent of the grades in every program that we offer comes from discussion forum participation so uh, 30 percent of grades in every module is actually coming from the way you uh, share your learning the way you add value to the discussions the way you uh, interact with your peers so it's a 360 degree learning that happens you don't only learn from your professor or the material that you have but basically your peers who also have a lot of experience and have a lot of, lot to offer in terms of contribution to knowledge right so social learning is very important you should have a platform where you should be able to share what you're learning and uh, it's not just informal but a very formal way of uh, you know applying uh, like doing a case analysis in a discussion forum so imagine a linkedin kind of a of an environment or a facebook kind of an environment which where you can actually do case analysis with peers with professors you know in a, in a social uh, 360 degree environment right? so that that is a truly unbeatable experience and, and enhances learning like um, never imagined so now coming to the uh, central focus of today's webinar of course uh, we are talking about the master of business administration program mba and uh, just to give you a broad overview about the structure so this program is two years uh, duration 24 months and uh, basically you are supposed to be a bachelor uh, degree holder to be eligible to apply for this program and uh, this program has 
three major components. One is the core subject. So there are nine core subjects as it's written here. Then there are two elective subjects and then a research project. So three components. So in total, nine plus two plus one. So 12 modules in total over a period of two years. And the core subjects uh, basically attack the uh, different pillars of management thought. As you can see, people in organization, marketing, economics, strategic management, entrepreneurship, finance, uh, financial reporting, data analysis, and of course, research methods. So these are the core subjects. Uh, so research method basically prepares you for this research project. Apart from that, you um, uh, an MBA student needs to do two electives to complete the program. These two electives can be chosen from different electric buckets, but if you are interested in healthcare management, uh, I've just listed for the purpose of illustration four uh, modules being offered as part of the healthcare elective, and you can actually select any two of these as your elective one and two. Okay, so if you select uh, uh, two uh, electives from the same area, which is in this case healthcare management. Your degree will say Master of Business Administration, but the transcript or the mark sheet, as it is popularly known in the Indian part of the world, the mark sheet will mention the specialization as healthcare management. And the good thing is, you need not right now at the stage of application or when you're starting your mba journey you need not decide on your specialization or your electives you can decide it later okay so till you take this uh, these two electives you have a you have full freedom to choose your electives even uh, shift to some other areas of uh, specialization so for example we offer a number of uh, uh, you know specialization areas for example, we offer finance, we offer marketing, information technology, project management, international business, supply chain management, strategic management, of course, healthcare management, analytics, HR management. Right? And of course, this list keeps on growing. Um, but basically, these are the electives offered from here. Within each uh, area, you need to select two to get a specialization in that, in that area. On the other hand, uh, true to the spirit of flexibility, we are not going to force you to even specialize. So for example, if you select uh, one from one from under finance, the other from marketing, even that's possible. So long as you do the two electives, you meet the credit requirements and you're uh, still going to get the MBA degree. But yes, the specialization would not be mentioned in that case, but still you can mix and match from here. So that's perfectly fine. So this is how the program uh, is structured. Of course, I can take questions. If you have any, please, um, of course, note down your questions. Um, we can take it. Uh, so this is uh, uh, later in the session. Uh, so this is our sample calendar, how you can complete all the 12 modules within two years. Okay, so if you see here, our first term, the next immediate term is starting from 25th March. So if you take two modules here, then the next module in term two, we have a trimester system, which means three terms in a year. So if you take two modules in every term, basically you're finishing the program in um, uh, two years. Okay. But you have, a, you have the option of even taking more and finishing earlier. For example, if you take three, three here, two here, one here, three here. So it's completely flexible. So accordingly, you can pace your progress and um, achieve whatever career objectives you have, right? So this is uh, what flexibility is all about. So sometimes, you know, especially people from finance uh, get very busy in the last fiscal of the year, uh, last quarter of the year because of uh, financial closing, etc. So they take one, but compensate it in the next term by taking three or four, right? So that is how you can use uh, this flexi-paced progression.
Okay, now how does the learning journey look like? So of course I, I told you about the portal. So we have content on one side, we have the dashboard which tells you what exactly is happening everywhere, including a live feed from the discussion board. So this is the first screen that you see here uh, when you log in with uh, tiled, uh, you know, components like announcements, uh, the assignments, uh, assignment deadlines, the um, the student or faculty profile and so many other things including the live feed from the discussion forum here and this is a snapshot of our content um, uh, this is uh, high quality content which has been authored by several international professors across the world and then of course you have the learning activity dashboard where you will basically see where you are, where all you have to uh, contribute and by what date the end and in 11 days so uh, these are all color coded you can have red uh, for those which are nearing end and deadline is closer so the learning portal is again uh, uh, our manipal product so it is basically our self-developed learning portal okay now coming to the reasons to study mba of course uh, all of you know mba as such gives you or helps you improve in two areas one is decision making and the other is problem solving both are of course related right and then there's a broader you know structured way of approaching uh, decisions approaching problems okay that that actually helps you uh, solve problems and, uh, and and take decisions which can be uh, you know sustainable which can be uh, considered as optimized option uh, to execute right but having said that um, i'll just uh, simply uh, you know summarize uh, six possible reasons of course there are more reasons but uh, today we are just focusing on six uh, number one is uh, especially since uh, the theme of uh, uh, you know webinar is healthcare management uh, so healthcare is of course the fastest growing uh, sector thanks to this pandemic but otherwise also because typically most countries spend about 10 percent of their gdp on healthcare developing countries uh, spend later uh, lesser uh, like india's target is three uh, percent but uh, on the other hand there are countries like us uh, which is targeting 18 to 20 percent as uh, their healthcare uh, uh, you know, outlive on the GDP. So when the government incentivizes scheme, you know, investment or outlays in that area, you know that obviously a lot of uh, things can happen in that area. A lot of growth can be witnessed, right? So healthcare is growing, and of course, all of uh, those who are following the stock market, etc., you would find um, in this pandemic, healthcare is one sector which has um, actually progressed and grown uh, compared to some other uh, segments like automobile and um, manufacturing and those kind of uh, uh, industries right and uh, second is of course uh, when you're doing an mba it makes sense to do online because then uh, you don't need to um, consider working and studying as mutually exclusive options right they are basically um, they are supposed to be having a lot of synergy right so uh, for example in many of our classes on the discussion forum students share the problems that they are facing uh, from their workplace okay a particular project or a particular human resource issue or a marketing issue and there's a crowdsourcing around that you know you, you crowdsource among your peers your professors and try to solve it or um, uh, see how the how to put the best foot forward right so there's a lot of synergy and secondly as i said our projects are all work integrated most of them are open ended so you can take up your work projects okay and uh, do something around that and some so there's a lot of synergy um, with an online program uh, if it is properly designed and uh, so thirdly you know of course um, online is good but when you are on top to well-informed dashboards 
you know the deadlines you know the schedule like for example before every term starts each webinar date each deadline is completely spelled out very clearly so that helps you stay organized mark important dates on your calendar and work around it right so that that creates an absolutely uh, uh, organized approach to working and learning without interfering in each of these uh, separately uh, the other three reasons i would say of course uh, global networking i said our professors are across the world our students are across the world and since we believe in social learning there's uh, infinite number of networking opportunities that you get okay and similarly as i said uh, the work integrated uh, learning um, uh, of course the discussion forum and the uh, everything is completely uh, work integrated and of course time and cost so uh, Preeti um, would share the fees and other details with all of you but uh, basically uh, our programs are very reasonably priced because we have always believed since our existence that learning should be affordable to all sections of the society that's the reason our students have come from 72 different nations over the last two decades okay so now uh, i have spoken enough so i will hand over the proceedings to uh, dr somendra uh, who is the director of center for transformative learning um, this is a very uh, noble initiative by uh, manipal uh, university college malaysia and at the same time, he's also the head of department of um, ophthalmology, and uh, he has, uh, you know, a um, number of years of experience. Of course, he has been in Malaysia since almost, uh, I believe, uh, 13 um, long 14 years. years. Yeah, 14 years. So, uh, Dr. Somendra, welcoming you here and uh, uh, handing over the proceedings to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chinnamayam, for a wonderful insight into the GNU. I'm really impressed with your 12,000 plus learners so far, e-library, and your flexible learning. That was really attractive, actually. So, you know, what adults can learn in the flexible times and your integration among the multi-professionals. Those are the things that actually really impressed me a lot. So, before I start, um, already introduced by Chinmoy. So, I'm in here from Manipal University College, Malaysia. But uh, this uh, MUCM started just one year before. It was popularly known as before as the Malacca Manipal Medical College. It started as a tuning program in the medical college. So with the collaboration with uh, Mahe, that is Manipal Academy of Higher Education in India. So we had two, uh, the students go there for MBBS studies for about uh, two and a half years. Then the rest two and a half years, they come back to Malaysia and do. Dental students, they go for two years there, three years here. So that was basically a tuning program uh, jointly agreed upon by the Indian government as well as the government of Malaysia. So it has started from 1997. Then uh, last year, we got the accreditation for the full um, university college to start. So all the students will be taught here only from the day one, or the, from the first year itself. So in fact, uh, this year we are completing 25 years. So I'm proud to be part of that actually. So I have been here since 2008. So like uh, the Chinmay was telling actually, so our system of teaching also mostly the same way we hone the competencies as per the Malaysian qualification agencies. And mostly we put into the application aspect, uh, not the memory part, what we were stressing. And a lot of integrations happens because most of the, our exam system is a comprehensive examination, not a discipline-based kind of examination. So students are taught how to mix and how to see that all the discipline learned in a holistic way for the good development as a good doctor. Now, coming back to the focus of today, so what I thought actually like, uh, they have done a change the landscape of learning through the digital way, right? The change. Similarly, the same shift is happening in the healthcare landscape. So most of the things happening digital or transformation towards the digital happening in the healthcare setup also. So we need to have a good amalgamation with the digital learning as well as digital applications in the health sector as well. So what I did actually, I did is the double ABCD analogy to tell you why the MBA in demand in healthcare sector and what are the opportunities for the MBA degree holders with healthcare management specializations that what Chinmay was telling, if you take two subjects of healthcare and complete, you will be a specialized in healthcare management. So why that is very important. 
so in that perspective if you look in the hospital or any healthcare setups it cannot survive with a just a uniprofessional kind of work we need multiple professionals to work together so that means they need to have awareness among the roles and responsibilities within themselves and they should work in a coordinated manner so that the result the outcome will be good for the patient's care is concerned to do that happen the mba graduates very important the mba degree holders will be the administration they will behave like a catalyst they act like a catalyst so that they can see it, the coordination happening and all the multi professionals working to a common cause that's the best quality healthcare for the patient so that is the reason why it is important to have mba holders in the healthcare industries in fact a lot of doctors now opting for doing the mba degree to get the skills of managerial skills as well as the leadership skills then the approach so i put this approach in a three i kind of things the so one is integrate like already chinmay has told how integration is works so when you work together as a cooperative or collaborative learning environment so various professionals help each other to learn better they learn from each other and that's what the integrated thing happens then another i is interprofessionals so multiple professional nursing professional the professionals the engineering professionals the digital it professionals the finance professional all the professional work together for the common cause of a best healthcare delivery system then the third one which is very important and also chinmay also highlighted is individualized you can see their module is mostly individualized you customize your learning you space your learning like on demand learning so learning is happening individual basis so these three things combined together will have a good coordinated approach so that covers why the mba in demand in healthcare so that is a double a now coming to the b part the double b part so business any business has business in it so we can't deny it any organizations need to have business in that so after pa passing out and if you want to join you can join in that sector also you will be a good strategic planner you can have budget creating a budget or creating some cost effective healthcare delivery you can innovate because mb is the platform where you learn how to innovate how to create new things how to have a new strategy in place so that you can do that is a business part if you want you can join in the financial sector and you can excel in that sector also behavior i mean human behaviors because any organization multiple people are working so people is concerned so that is the human resource so after having this degree you can also have the administrator in the human resource department you can regulate that because you can better understand you having a healthcare management uh, uh, knowledge and skills with you you can better understand people working in the healthcare industries so that you can better regulate them you can get more productive outcome from them and you can satisfy them employee satisfaction we can do that because if the language is being understood in the both the parties we get a good output so that is the b part then the central part of the healthcare delivery the c part actually so basically all about caring the community right that's why i put the community and care at the c so in the uh, hospital setups maybe a small setup maybe a corporate hospital maybe a uh, multi center hospitals or maybe a re healthcare research centers so you will be ad ad uh, absorbed as the administrator sometimes you can do as the manager clinical manager if some research is happening there so you can be a manager for the research you can control the research you can coordinate the activities research activities so those things you can do that is very important and that is the bread and butter of the what healthcare industry is all about so that also give you good opportunity to mingle with the patient know understand the people and understand the disease or delivery or understand how the disease is being treatment treated how you can have a good connection between the care giver and care receivers you will be bridging between that so you will be a good work you can do uh, being a mba in healthcare management so that is double c with all these thing in the initial years as you progress in your career always definitely the dignity will come and you will be more dignified always aim for be a chief executive officer so in no time you may find yourself in the top of the this uh, at the higher place in the helm of the organizations and you will be the chief executive sometimes you will be controlling the finance as a chief finance officer so a lot of opportunities there to be a dignified person in this uh, having this um, mba with healthcare management and when you have that kind of thing as uh, chinmay was pointing out that uh, in the gnu they are having a multiple faculty members almost globalized faculty members from australia us uk and singapore and india everywhere 
So sim similarly, as a leader in that particular organization in the healthcare setup, you can bring the unity among the diversity, which is the need of the hour. So if you see, uh, I've just shortlisted few of the things. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, just shortlisted few only, but that's not limited to those scope. You have so many collateral openings. In fact, I was reading, I saw some of the universities, some of the healthcare setup, they are having uh, what you call the administrator for coding, medical codings. So you can see new, new posts also coming up. As we go on, like this corona pandemic has shown that a lot of things can do online, a lot of new things can happen. So that's, you can see new, new uh, job openings will be happening, which you have not had before. So a lot of collateral opening there for you. So now start thinking big always and to work hard for that. You have a very good environment, the GNU there to offer you all this course to complete in a stipulated time as per your pace in the individualized manner and excel in your career. So thank you very much and all the best to all of you. Over to you, Chinmay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Somendra, for your wonderful insights. I'm sure by now you would have a good understanding about uh, the possible openings and uh, to accelerate your career in the area of healthcare management. And as I said, uh, you know, we are, of course, uh, uh, you, you can decide on your uh, specialization later. At the time of application, you need not freeze, it's still open. You can decide any time uh, about your specialization before taking those two electives, right? Yes. And that typically uh -huh. happens towards the end of uh, the um, your last two terms of your program. So you have a lot of time to decide, but if you have decided, then go ahead, as Dr. Somendo said, uh, there are a lot of opportunities. But yeah, now I'll be, uh, we'll be taking your uh, Q&A. So please feel free yes. uh, to ask questions, yeah. Over uh, to you, so, Professor, we have a question. Uh, can one opt for a specialization in AI or leadership? Uh, okay, now we do have the HR management which uh, uh, covers that part. Of course, these are two different areas, AI and uh, uh, you know uh, leadership. So leadership is of course covered under the health, uh, the human resource management stream of uh, specialization. That is there. Um, now AI, uh, uh, right now we uh, do not do not offer a, as an elective, but yeah, we we have plans to add that to our electives list. Uh, see, because this is an MBA program, so it's not about the technology behind AI, but business applications of AI that are more important. So that is what uh, we are planning to introduce. Uh, we also have um, another program, which is Master of Science in uh, Information Technology Management. So there you will find more of coverage on uh, those technology related areas. Uh, but yeah, uh, then that is a good suggestion. Thank you. In fact, I can just tell it a bit actually. Yeah. We are planning to have some short courses on AI in healthcare systems that is coming up because they're very good applications. But if you connect to the MBA, they should have a little bit knowledge about that. If such kind of uh, things exist in that particular organization where they're going to work, it will be much helpful. They can easily connect to them. Correct. Thank you, Professor. So there's one more question like, can I complete the program uh, earlier than two years duration? Yes, that's a good question. So as I said, uh, there's a lot of flexibility in the program. You can actually, if you take more than two modules every term, uh, then obviously you can finish. But yes, you have to wait two years for the certificate. But before that, if you happen to finish it earlier, let's say in 18 months, we can always give you a letter of completion. That letter of completion has been used by many of our students to get uh, promotion and other benefits from their workplaces. So. Uh, so that's that's perfectly possible. Uh, so credit transfer is possible. Uh, the next yes. question. Yes, yes. Of course, we accept um, credit from other institutions. So if you have done um, a master's level program earlier, and there is 80% match in the curriculum uh, specific um, in the particular module, and your grades are decent in that module then of course we can waive that requirement. So you don't need to, to repeat those modules. So three things, your grades, the syllabus matching, and the credit matching. These three we take into consideration. If there is uh, enough 
reasonable amount of uh, matching we are ready to uh, you know consider the credit transfer request and then in that case you will have to do lesser modules to complete your program okay so the next question uh, by Vivek Gupta, letter of completion can be used for DBA program of Manipal. Yes, that can be used. Right. So, uh, so can I uh, complete the program in two years? That is already answered. So online mentioned anywhere in the certificate or the mark sheet online as an online degree. Yeah, that's a very good question. As I said, um, this marks we are almost into our 21st year of um, uh, delivering online education. We do not discriminate between online and campus based programs. So, nowhere on the certificate or the transcript, any mention of online is there. And MQA is also very particular about it. Many regulators around the world have also uh, brought out advisory not to discriminate between. The different modes of learning. So long as you meet the student learning hours and the credit norms, it is a qualification. So whether online or offline doesn't actually matter. So therefore, uh, in summary, uh, none of no, nowhere. I mean, not even in our certificate, not transcript. The word online is not mentioned anywhere. Uh, Professor, the next question: What is the minimum percentage to pass a module? Yes, that's a good question. So 50% is the minimum requirement at master's level. So you must uh, secure 50% score um, to complete, to pass some of you. Okay. The, the last, the one last question, which institution will be issuing the degree? Yes, good question. And the degree, the MBA degree will be offered by Manipal Global Next University. But yes, we have a lot of short term programs, etc., where we will collaborate with other institutions and all that. But uh, this question, I believe, is for an MBA program. So that is for, that comes from Manipal Global Next University. Like uh, Dr. Samandra was mentioning, um, there's this AI and medical. Uh, yeah, so so that that certificate uh, would be coming from NUCM. We can also, you know, uh, cope co certify the learner like Manipal Global Next on one side and MUCM on another side. But as far as the MBA etc is concerned, uh, it is basically from Manipal Global Next University. Thank you Dr. Saumendra Sahu and Dr. Chinmoy for the in, uh, insightful information. I hope you, you have benefited from our uh, webinar which provide insights into the MBA program. And I thank you for your time and look forward to the commencement of your learning journey with us very soon. So if you have any questions, uh, please mail us or we will get in touch with you. You can leave your numbers. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank okay. you all.